Greetings, we're going to try to uh, videotape with my camera here uh, for activities one and two for the lab. You should have already watched through the video lecture and filled out your prediction sheets. Uh, what we're going to do is build these circuits and then take some measurements. I'll uh, show you the doodads that I have here. This is a multi-tester. Uh, I don't know if you can see the screen. I've been having a little fits with it. I think I've blown a fuse here. So sometimes it works and sometimes it don't. A multi-tester will always have two leads, a red lead and a bl black lead. On a multi-tester, the black lead always stays on the common in the middle. Then the red lead, normally on the right, that would be volts and uh, resistance or ohms. Then if you want to do amperage, you pull that out, pull that at the other side, and you do amperage. I uh, should have slowed down here a little bit. When you're doing amperage, you turn your dial to the A for amperage. We're doing a DC current, so with this particular one is DC. We have a button to push. Some of them, the AC-DC is built into the dial. Uh, so if I want to do ohms, I would put it on the resistance put the red lead back over to the right side. That would be with no power connected to it in series. And then when I want to do volts, I turn it down to volts and they stay on the same side and we hook it back up to the power source and then we do a parallel. Now, the difference between parallel and series when you're using the ohm meter is if I was going to check this resistor here, which is part of the uh, uh, demonstration here. When you, you got your power off, nothing connected. When you're doing parallel, you go to both ends of the resistor. If you're doing series, you would disconnect the lead and go from the terminal to the uh, wire coming in. We'll kind of show you that. But what I want to explain now is what is a resistor? Uh, this is a, as an example of a resistor that's out of a circuit. So if you were building a circuit, you might want to take electronics class. They're color-coded. It resists a certain amount of electrons to flow through there. So we're going to kind of show you how that works. We're going to put this on DC again. We're on the ohm side. So we're going to flip it up to ohms. This is where my thing kicks in and kicks out from time to time. And then you would take your leads and the, uh, you're not hooked up to a power source. So the battery in the uh, multimeter sends its own circuit through there and measures the resistance. This resistor is about 235. Now I couldn't get these to work earlier, but this is a little different resistor. If I can get it to work today, we connect those. All right, it's working. That gives a little different measurement. That's about a 50 or 51 resistance. Okay. Now what we're going to do is build a, a circuit. We're going to use these handy dandy little jobs that already have leads. So that's going to imitate our 10 ohms resistor. That's going to imitate our 25. And that's going to imitate our 25. So the first thing we're going to do is take a reading. If you were in the... Uh, uh, back at school, we would actually have a 10, a 25, and a 25, and you would take these individuals' readings. Uh, these aren't those, so they're going to get a little different reading. I'm out of limits now. I think my multi-tester's shot. Now we're going to get a reading. This one's about 15 ohms. This one is about 465, and this one's about... 465. They both have the same little number on there, so these are from a different lab scenario than what we would do. Um, but what we're going to do is imitate this in percent a 10, a 25, and a 25 to kind of give you a feel for what resistor is. A light bulb has resistance against current, and if you force a current to go through there, the filament in the bulb is resistant and gives off a light. So if I wanted to measure the resistance of this bulb, I would not have it up to a power source, and that's got about 4.6. Here's a little electric uh, motor. It would have a certain amount of resistance to get those rotors to turn, so that's about a 1 ohm resistance motors. We'll play with those later, but resistance is how we get work done. Now, you really can't see the work on these types of resistors, but the result is these would be heating up 
and they would be controlling where and how fast electrons moved to operate a solid state circuitry board of some kind. Again, that's electronics class. You need to take that up in the other building. Here, we're just gonna try to build some circuits. So what we're gonna do here is, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna set these up in series. So I'm gonna lay those out, kind of like the picture. We've got a power lead, which I'll hook up later, it comes in, and then we're gonna jump that power from this resistor to this resistor. And then we're gonna jump that power from this resistor to this resistor. And then we're gonna hook it up to the uh, power source. This would be re your return line. And this would be the source going in. Uh, I've turned this down to about a six. When I ran the 12, this little guy started heating up. So if I power this up, I can control the voltage here. Not sure if you can read that, but there's a little dial here. I've got about as low as it can go. But since this is in series, that means all the electrons are flowing in one direction. All of them go through this one. All of them go through this one. All of them go through this one, and they go back to the power source. So when we did the math on this, remember to figure out the total resistance, we added the 10 to the 25 to the 25 and got 60. We hooked it up to a 12 power source, the 12 divided by 60. I'm gonna grab, make sure we're doing the right here. It comes out to a 0.2 current. So the current is constant. So if I'm gonna measure the current, I need to get my lead. I'm gonna shut that off for a second. I'm gonna get my lead here. I'm gonna get this over to amps. I'm gonna make sure I'm back on DC. And my amps is where I think I've got the problem. It says this fuse light comes on. But when I power this up, this time, what we have to do is disconnect the lead in order to take a reading. Power on. So your one lead, and I'm just gonna clamp it to this, becomes a part of the circuit. And then the other lead completes the circuit. And like I said, I think I this works part of the time and part of the time it doesn't. So let's see if I can get that to work now. See, it flashes back and forth. If it was working correctly and these were 10, 25, and 25, that would read a point two. So if I connect that back to here, to check the circuit a little farther down, disconnect the leads so they're series again. That would give you the same current of about 0.2, which it's working there now. So regardless of where you take your leads apart, we would have you take a reading and all of those with the 10, the 25, and the 25, which should be somewhere close to a 0.2, which would probably be somewhere around a 1.9-ish because you're gonna lose a little bit to the wires. But that is a series. So we just check that current stays constant. If we wanna check the voltage, we put this lead back over here. We turn this to voltage. And we wanna make sure we're still on DC. So with the power on, we put our leads parallel now in the circuit, so you'd go on opposite ends. It would measure the voltage going across there. That one's about a 98. This one here is about, I can't read it over there where the decimal point is, about a three-ish. And this one here is about a three-ish. These two should read about the same because they have the same resistance. Now again, don't get confused. We're not gonna get the same numbers because we have different resistors, but this voltage reading for this first one here should have been somewhere around uh, two, and these both here should have been somewhere around five. And I don't have a uh, watt meter, so I can't check the wattage. So that's the display here. No need to write anything down. Just follow along. I'm gonna rebuild this as a series. And then when we go to the next section, you'll be writing some stuff down again. So kind of watch through here. I'm gonna flip over. We're gonna do a parallel circuit. So I'm gonna turn my power off, take my two leads off, tear these pieces off. And then I'm gonna start building a parallel circuit. A parallel circuit, the power is gonna come in, jump and jump. 
So that's across one set, and then we return the power. We can jump from here to here, and there from here to here. You hook your power coming in, and your power return. They're kind of jumping around here, the wires. They're crisscrossing, but these are in series, excuse me, parallel. Stay hooked, dude. These alligator clips are kind of a pain. So you got one set of electrons that can go through here, or some of them go down here and go through there, or some of them go down there and go through there. But the difference from one side to the other side, or half this circuit, the other side of the circuit, is the same as the source voltage. So if we were going to do a, a voltmeter, I've got volts over there still. i got volts over here. i still got that on there. So if I check the uh, uh, flow from one side to the other, that stays hooked together, and it works. Uh, might help if I turn the power on. Okay, we should get a little over six. And then we're going to get a little over six again. And then we get a little over six again, because I have it set on six. Our display, we would have it at 12, so you'd get right at 12 reading. The voltage stays constant. Now, the resistance didn't change. You would check the resistance just like we did on the series. You would uh, shut your power off. You've got your leads on the correct side over here, and, do your, and you would check how much is flowing across that particular one, and how much would be flowing across this particular one. So you would have got the same readings as you did the series because you didn't change the resistors. What you changed is how they're wired. So in parallel, the voltage stayed constant, right around 12. And then the flow of the current is a little different. Again, you got to get your leads over to the correct side. You got to turn this on amperage. You got to make sure you're still on DC though. The fuse is up again. So you would disconnect your leads. And the multi-tester becomes a part of the circuit. And you would get a reading. That particular reading there would be different than this reading here. Which would be different from the reading going through this circuit because remember the voltage is constant and the current changes. And when we did the mathematical calculations, we had uh, on the parallel circuit, we had to take the sum of the inverses. And if we had a 10, a 25 and a 25, we'd have roughly 1.2 amps going through this one, 0.48 amps going through this one and 0.48 amps going this one. And since I don't have a, power, a watts meter, you would just have to uh, do the math down here, which would be off a little bit from the original because each one of those readings would be slightly less. So that's a parallel circuit. Okay. Um, remember series or uh, amperage, you have to disconnect the circuit and become part of the series with the power on. Voltage. You measure with the power on and you go in parallel and amps, or I'll get their ohms, power off and parallel. So that concludes activity one and two. Uh, I'll get set up and do another recording and we'll uh, finish the uh, rest of this lab with another video. Thank you.